Joe's versus Pro's Week 9 in the NFL. He's Rafael Esparza, and I'm Scott Spritzer. We're going to talk about where the public action is, where the sharp action is on this week's football slate. We're also going to give a free play in the Sunday night clash between Drew Brees and Tom Brady, the Saints, and the Buccaneers. Real quick note before we do that, check this out, guys. You can get 25% off any Doc's Cappers $30 daily package and or 25% off any Cappers $99 weekly package. And this is good Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. It expires on Monday. You'll need the passcode, and that passcode is FB25. That is FB25. So be sure to check that out uh, this weekend over at DocSports.com. All right, Raphael, let's not bury the lead. Let's get right to it. Saints, Bucks, Clash in Tampa on Sunday night. Marquee game of the week, to be sure. Uh, Brady and the Bucks looking at my screen right now, but a four-and-a-half point home favorite. There are some fours out there. Uh, the total has been the big news today. It's dropped all the way from 55 and a half down to 50. And as of right now, weather is expected to be an issue in Tampa. Also, Drew Brees being questionable certainly has drawn some of the interest from those who want to hunt down their money on this game. He does have a shoulder issue. He has missed a couple of practices this week, but he is expected to start. Your thoughts? Yeah, I'm not sold on a whole injury, shoulder injury. I think they're just trying to hype this game up because let's face it, what are you going to hype up? The two four, uh, 4 o'clock Eastern games when one of them's Pittsburgh and Dallas with a 14-point spread? Are you going to hype up a Monday night game that has the N-Y-J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets on a Monday night game? I think that's just all hype for Tampa Bay's uh, and New Saints. And Breeze is going to play it. But let's face it, it's the best game on the board, probably the best game all weekend long uh, if you even want to throw in college football because there's no Trevor Lawrence at Notre Dame. So that kind of marquee yeah. messes up with that one. So if you're looking for just marquee, and I stress that capitalized marquee matchup, it's got to be this game right here between Tampa Bay and the Saints. Can Tampa Bay get some re revenge? Because week one, Tampa Bay had to go to the empty, empty uh, Superdome in New Orleans and they lost that game. So can they get revenge on this one? If there's going to be weather involved, I would think that would help Tampa Bay because we all know Drew Brees' record uh, outside and in weather conditions is not that it's not very good. Uh, I like Tampa Bay in this one. I think the public is going to like Tampa Bay, especially it's going to be a chase game if the public loses, which this week the public should be winning because if, if you looked at what Vegas and the books have done, they won, week, they won a week, they lose a week, they won a week. Last week, the books had a monster week. So maybe that means uh, the, the betters win this week. So I can't wait. I can't wait to see what the Lions do uh, all weekend and all Sunday. So uh, I'm leaning uh, towards Tampa Bay, but you said weather could be an issue. It's kind of cool, though, when you think about the fact that you could actually see Jameis Winston at quarterback for a certain portion of this game, but Drew Brees is a little bit banged up. Uh, Tampa Bay probably wishes to see that. I'm sure Winston wouldn't mind a little bit of potential revenge if he can get in there. That means three touchdown passes and three picks, though, uh, for the New Orleans side if he does play. And, of course, Taysom Hill could take some snaps. Uh, but the big, you know, besides the fact that Drew Brees is expected to play, it sounds like you are in agreement with me. We both expect he's going to play. Uh, the big deal is Alvin Kamara. He did return to practice on Thursday. Uh, Michael Thomas is now probable for this game. Uh, but if Kamara is out there and he's healthy, which he's going to be, you're talking about a guy who's having a historic season for running backs. I mean, he's gonna he's on pace to almost hit that 1,000-yard rushing mark, to have nearly 1,300 receiving yards by the end of the season. And he leads the league in yards from scrimmage right now. He's got more receptions uh, from the running back position through this portion of the season, through eight games, uh, than anybody in history. I mean, it's just been an incredible season for Kamara. Uh, the Bucks, well, they've been winning by margin, Raphael. Their games have been you know, just good, solid victories when they've won games. Most of the Saints' wins come right down to the wire, or right down to one possession. But here's the thing, man. If you're going against New Orleans and Drew Brees is on the field, let's just remember that they've won 16 of 19 straight up uh, away from home, covering, what, 15, uh, 16 of those games also, something crazy like that. It's a, uh, and, and let me clarify that. I, I kind of mixed that up. They've won 16 of 19 straight up on the road. They've covered six of the last seven against the spread as a road dog. So if he's healthy, I suspect he will be. It, it's a situation where you're going to go against that. The number dropping the way it is, the public kind of leaning towards New Orleans right now is kind of iffy for me. Uh, here's the thing about the total. And I'm going to be on this total if this scenario happens, Raphael. If it is raining, but it's not windy, 
you know as well as I do, the receivers have the advantage over the DBs. The receivers know where they want to go in the routes they're running. The corners, the safeties have to make cuts on the field uh, based off of that. And they slip and slide a little bit more than the receivers. And I think the game dropping five and a half points on the total goes over as long as it's not windy conditions. As far as the side itself, I got I'm going to have to side here with Tampa Bay and revenge. I'm going to have to go with Tom Brady and everybody as far as wide receiver is concerned is on the field this week for Tampa Bay. We might even see some AB on the field on Sunday night, Raphael. Yeah. I, I don't think AB is going to make a big difference on Sunday unless Godwin is not going to be able to go if there's a either broken hand. I know he had surgery on it. But you mentioned I think the total is a, could be a good play if the number continues to drop. The Saints are the only team in the NFL that all their seven games have gone over the total this year. So and we've all seen what the Saints have done on defense this year. The Saints usually are a Super Bowl contending defensive team the last four or five years. They, they've been relying on our defense this year, not even close to what we've seen in years past. When the Chicago Bears put up 23 points against them, uh, when Carolina, a rebuild Carolina, puts up 27, we all know what the Chargers did. We all know what the Lions do on, on offense with them. I'm not sold on this defense of the Saints. So, again, uh, I think you you hit the nail right on there. The right receivers are going to have the edge. If it is just rain and not wind, they're going to have the big edge uh, for both quarterbacks. I think both quarterbacks uh, are going to have big, big, big days. Uh, let's just face it. If Hill gets in the game for uh, the Saints, he's not passing. I can guarantee you he's not passing if, they, if Taysom Hill gets in the game. He's running. It's going to be all run, all dump off screens, check downs, and everything else. They're not going deep in all likelihood more than once as a surprise. A uh, real quick note on Friday afternoon, I was watching an NFL uh, a network show about the NFL, and they were talking about Godwin being able to play in this game. So uh, it's it, it should be a fun game. I hope weather doesn't affect this game because I just want a really good, solid, well-played game. Uh, let's switch over to Joe's versus pros for this week, Raphael. And remember, as you mentioned, remember, folks, uh, that the public has not been that automatic go against this season. They've had their times this year where they've shined brightly and made some betters, some professional betters, uh, not too happy, none too happy taking away from the bankroll a little bit. Let's start with the Bears at Tennessee, where Tennessee's a six and a half point favorite, uh, total up an inch or so to 47. Chicago Raphael is getting 54% of the action or the tickets. Tennessee being pounded by sharp money, 75% of the money against the spread right now on the Titans. Yeah, those tickets written on the Bears, do they watch football? I mean, am I the only one that screams on the TV and says, why is Fold still there? Suck up your pride and put your jersey back in there? Heck, if I'm Jim McMahon, put your jersey back on and your headband on because this <laughs> offense is pathetic in Chicago. I, I understand why the, uh, the Sharps are all over Tennessee. The Sharps are going to continue to be all over Tennessee until I think this number lands at maybe a seven mark. Uh, but uh, I can guarantee you the books are going to be – watching this game hopefully the bears can pull out a cover or straight up victory because let's face it tennessee is going to be a heavy heavy bet money line parlay teaser action game so uh, i can guarantee you all the sports book directors will be doing a super bowl shuffle as big bear fans on sunday you know and one of the things i keep hearing from bears backers is the fact that tennessee their defense has given up 27 or more in five of the last six games but this could very well be just what the doctor ordered for the Titan defense going up against that Bears offense. Ravens lay at a point and a half, total 48 at Indianapolis. And I am going to, I'm looking at books right now as we speak on my screen. I got about 15 books, Raphael. And that number, which was a point and a half just a little while ago on Friday afternoon, is as low as pick them now in several books. Joe's about 60% of the tickets on the Ravens. Obviously, that means a lot of sharp money coming into the Colts with this game moving down to a pick. Remember, the Ravens opened in a couple of books as high as three and a half uh, this past Sunday night. So listen, Raphael, the Ravens, again, no bigger than a one point favorite as we speak, picking some books. So I, I got to ask you this question as I'm as I'm looking at these numbers. Sports book director for many, many years on the Vegas Strip and elsewhere. Just tell the people what it takes when there's no major injury to a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, what it takes to move a game in the NFL from a three-point favorite to pick them. Money that me and you don't have in our wallets or in our <laughs> bank accounts that makes them a pick like that. I've seen, uh, as I was looking through the betting screen on Tuesday when I was moving numbers for something that we're all tired of talking about uh, as on election yeah. day, 
I seen some big action coming in on the Colts. A lot of wise guy action coming in on the Colts. And let's face it, their defense is probably the quietest non-talk defense in the NFL in years to come. I mean, this Colts defense is no joke. Uh, they've won back-to-back -back games where they've won, I think, five out of the last six. Uh, I totally understand why the wise guys are betting the Colts, and I can continue to see Colts action coming in probably as we speak. And let's face it, Baltimore's taking a step backwards. They're not the same Baltimore team they were last year. Uh, I think everyone realizes maybe Pittsburgh Steelers are the best team in that division, not the Baltimore Ravens. So I have a feeling that's why some of the probably uh, wise guys and other people are jumping with those wise guy action coming in. Colts are going to be a big play, I think, all weekend long. I was looking at that game last week. I was on the wrong side. I had the Ravens over the Steelers. And there was good news and bad news for me. Obviously, I don't want to lose a bet. At the same time, did a video at Docs before the season, and I laid a pretty big price for me when it comes to things like this. I laid a buck 40 that the Steelers would make the postseason this year. Uh, so there was that to fall back on, even though I was disappointed in the loss by the Ravens. I was watching that game. They outgained Pittsburgh by about 200 yards, and they had two empty trips in the red zone. That was the difference in the game. Uh, but that makes you do think about Baltimore and that offense and Lamar Jackson, who had a phenomenal superstar historic year last year, not quite the same. And what's odd about this is in the offseason, I don't know if you remember this, Raphael, but John Harbaugh was pretty outspoken uh, talking to the media that we've got to get Lamar to take that next step, which means being able to complete passes downfield more. No more checkdowns as much, no more intermediate dump offs as much. He's got to be able to stretch the field and do so on a regular basis. And then he almost completely forgets about his one receiver who can break uh, a little bit of space between himself and defenders and go deep. I, I don't see that next step being made by Lamar Jackson yet. I don't want to knock the guy too much. I mean, listen, the guy was phenomenal last year. He's still good this year. But when they step up against elite teams, I'm not so sure that they're going to get the job done and get any further in the postseason than they did last year. I agree with you, and, and I, I'm with you. I had the Ravens last week as well, so I had the big L as well on yeah. my forehead stamped on that one. But this is a big game. I mean, let's say the Colts do the same thing what Pittsburgh does. Maybe uh, control the second half, uh, put some points up and spread it around and, and keep that uh, uh, Ravens defense on the field and then gas in the fourth quarter. If that's the case, uh, I think we're going to hear some Lamar Jackson rumblings. I thought for sure they were going to move for another wide right receiver during a trade deadline, but let's face it, the NFL trade deadline is horrible. It's like going to a baseball card show to try to trade your baseball cards. Nothing's going to happen. So uh, I can totally see why they didn't get any help. But, yeah, I really thought – I think maybe if they can get another key piece during the offseason for next year, then maybe he does take that step. But right now I just don't see it. I'm glad you said baseball cards. I was a little worried you were going with the Star Trek convention analogy, and I didn't want to go there. Uh, Panthers at the Chiefs is the final game we're going to talk about between the Joes and the Pros. Uh, Chiefs laying 10 and a half, total 52 and a half. Casey's been as high as 12 and a half this week. They are, to no surprise, the public team here. They're getting 54% of the tickets, right under 55%. 65% of the money on Carolina plus the points. And the news on Christian McCaffrey is that he is now probable. If he is able to play and play close to 100%, then all of a sudden it's a little bit tougher to force Teddy Bridgewater to become Teddy Checkdown, which is what he was last week against the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, this one's interesting. I can't wait to watch this on a handicapper point of view and an odds maker point of view. For an odds maker point of view, we're going to be big Carolina fans. We're going to be big Jet fans because, again, teasers and parlays are all going to be on Kansas City, New England, uh, carried back all the way with Green Bay last night. So it's going to be very interesting. But you said it, McCaffrey plays, that's a totally different offensive game. And you were going to see the playbook a little bit more wide open than, like you said, dump downs and screen passes. If he plays, it's a totally different game. And would not shock me if the Chiefs only win by, let's say, a touchdown. Uh, it's, it's, this game has circled for me, not for gambling-wise and make a lot of money, but I want to see what Carolina looks like offense healthy because I thought this team was going to be really bad. And this team, was, they, they fight. They remind me of the Miami Dolphins of last year. Everyone thought they were going to stink, but they just compete. They show a lot of heart. Uh, this Carolina team has a lot of heart. They can keep this game close. Kansas City, 17-1 and one straight up run, 16-2 and two against the spread of the last 18. Obviously, that's tough to buck. The public is going to uh, be on the Chiefs, as you mentioned. Raphael, real quick note before I uh, talk about the discounted package again this week over at DocSports.com. Real quick note on what's happening for you at DocSports.com this weekend. 
Not only do we have football on Saturday and Sunday, but you know what's going on right now while I'm watching and going on all day on Saturday? The ponies are going around in circles because you know why? It's Breeders' Cup weekend. So Breeders' Cup weekend is one of my favorite, favorite times uh, of, of horse racing. It's a Super Bowl of horse racing. I had five races today. I got about anywhere between six and seven tomorrow. We're waiting to see if any scratches come out. Uh, the first race at Breeders' Cup tomorrow. I'll give you guys a free play right here. The number one, Nashville. Four to five will be the heavy favorite. No one beats this horse. He can probably run backwards and probably still hit the board. So Nashville, the first race at the Breeders' Cup tomorrow at Keeneland. But uh, a big day for me in the NFL. We have two plays uh, going in the NFL. And, of course, a full slate on Saturday of college football, UFC. Don't forget, next weekend, Masters. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And I've got a six-play football card Saturday and Sunday. I've got uh, three in the – College ranks, three in the NFL, actually two Sunday NFL plays and the Monday night play. Uh, so six football plays in all. We're involved in PGA round by round. Check that out. Nice 28 and 15 run right now in PGA and uh, also involved in UFC. I, you know, I've been doing one fight per card for the last seven weeks. We've won six of the last seven. So that's me knocking on wood. I, I'm not trying to jinx it here. And I've got my first top play of the college football season uh, going on Saturday. If people are watching this before the games kick off on Saturday. Now, here's what's cool is you got all this stuff going on this weekend, folks, and you can actually receive a discount if you want to jump on board. You can get 25% off any Docs Cappers $30 daily package and or 25% off any Cappers $99 weekly package. And this is good Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It includes Monday and then it'll expire on Monday night. The passcode, by the way, is FB25. That's F B25. So check that out if you wish. And by the way, there's no max on that. You can use that 25% off on as many cappers as you please over at DocSports.com. He's Rafael Esparza. I'm Scott Sprite. So let's put the weekend in the win column. We'll talk to you again next week on Joe's versus Pros.